Well, we're on to factors that contribute to capacity planning. This is 1.2. Um, once again, this is right from CompTIA. So we did we did 1.1 last time. We're doing 1.2 this time. So that's this section right here. Man, PDFs do not like you to be able to highlight. Anyway, this section right here. Anyway, cool. Um, and once again, I'll link to things down below. So, uh, and the cloud architecture design, which this is only a part of, is 13% of the test, okay? That comes from the exam objectives, that information. So requirements, when you're thinking about what you need, you need to be thinking about uh, what is the hardware required for it? Um, how much CPU, how much storage capacity, um, how much memory things are gonna consume. And what software is required to run something. So uh, these are all requirements that you're gathering. Uh, how much is it going to cost? Uh, is, is this a need or a want? Um, what is the cost of this need? Uh, so these are all requirements that you would gather as you try and understand um, the going back to the capacity. Uh, okay. So, uh, and this can play into if you decide to go in with the cloud or not in the cloud. The one of the things that really drives uh, people to bring things to the cloud is this hardware requirement. Um, if this hardware requirement is too big to even get started, and you don't even know if it's going to be successful, if you're going to need it for a long time, you can spin up in the cloud, uh, play with it, test it, and then decide if you want to run it locally later or maybe it just doesn't work out and you get rid of it so uh and it's really cool because in the cloud um the costs are different as well, as well so talking about licensing so it might be that you have a per user license maybe it's a uh, per person that's using email right or socket based um volume based so there's all these different the types of licensing, core-based uh, and subscriptions. In fact, one of the things that drove a lot of companies to Linux, which is what, what I like to work with, is licensing. Um, uh, a little story there is we had software that required us, well, for example, Microsoft, that wanted to be core-based and we were virtualizing and we wanted to be, wanted to be able to um, have a production environment and non-production and, and even multiple non-production so we could test things before we, we rolled them out and it just cost skyrocket uh, so whenever possible we'd use open source uh, but even uh, the software that we were installing into the OS had the same issues all, all this licensing so whenever you're doing um, trying to understand how to use stuff you need to understand all these different licensing uh, the licensing that comes into play and and the limitations because uh, even like subscriptions it you might say that you can use everything but only this much can be downloaded per month or or only so many requests um, in a given time period so there's a lot of different things that you need to understand with the licensing of these different products um as we Think about general capacity planning. Templates is, is, is trying to set up a system so that it has, um, so you can kind of stamp it out. Uh, I, I, when I hear templates, I think golden templates. So where you have this or an image, a golden image, uh, this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, user density, how many uh, people are going to be hitting it at, at a time? Uh, what does the system look like as it as it's getting hit um, and planning for that what so when is your business busiest times of the year of the day of the week of the month um, understanding those and and being able to scale accordingly to do a lot of this you do need to be watching what are your baselines um, what is the normal um, pattern of behavior uh, so do you usually only need two or three nodes on the system uh, and then it spikes at a certain time uh, what are your anomalies 
uh, do you understand what those anomalies are? So as you're trying to understand your capacity, uh, these are all things that you need to dig in to try and um, plan for so you can, can handle it in the future. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to approach these, uh, depending on uh, what type of uh, com what company you are, how big you are, uh, how far you are in the different maturity models. But understanding uh, system load, it takes, uh, takes time. Um, so, uh, and, and understanding a system, how it's going to react. So, uh, one of the cool things with the cloud is, uh, if you get it wrong, it, you just buy more or less. Um, it, it's, it, it's a little harder if you're doing things on prem because you buying more might take weeks or, or months, depending on what you you need to get. Um, or if it's power, it might even take a year. Um, to get the, the extra capacity added. Um, so general capacity planning is, is uh, once again, uh, something that the cloud really helps with because uh, if you get it wrong, it's, it's easier to, to shift. It's just costs because uh, you, you have to pay for what you use. Um, a, a short story here, uh, and I'll generalize it because uh, I see this over and over again. I see people throw um, systems and, and, and stuff to handle poorly uh, set up things, um, whether it's they have the wrong parameters so that the, it's, it's not running well, or it, it, maybe they're doing something in code or at the database or even at the organization. Maybe they're doing something that's just weird that doesn't make much sense. Uh, I'll give you one specific example. Um, timekeepers. Uh, one of the one of the issues with capacity I had to look at is for some reason we were having outages uh, and uh, eventually tied it down to there was a specific timekeeper and uh, that that was crashing the system. And as we looked at it, most timekeepers only had uh, 10, 20 people that they managed and took care of the time. This person had a couple thousand. <laughs> um, and just the system wasn't handled for that. For that matter, no one can keep track of a couple thousand people and if they're submitting their time properly. Um, so that, uh, <clears throat> that made no sense. So there was an organizational issue there. Um, but uh, the, the system just couldn't handle it. So understanding what parts it was breaking uh, to, to see how we could maybe manage it a little bit better. Uh, we actually did find some SQL we were able to tune uh, to help it as well. Um, but yeah, it just, it, it was not uh, planned for it. So sometimes when you're planning for capacity, you actually find ways to improve the system to perform better. Um, as you're trying to understand things, as you're looking at the anomalies. Anyway, I hope you had a good one. We'll see you in the next video.